Hello Booktube, I thought I'd pop on to do a review uh, of a book I haven't really seen, well, I haven't seen anyone talk about on Booktube as far as I know and apologies if you have and I missed it but I did do a quick YouTube search um, and nothing comes up uh, apart from an author interview uh, which is very good um, uh, but it's the, the Village Idiot by Steve Stern I uh, recently finished this and uh, um, immediately became sort of probably my favourite, well, at least one of my favourite reads of the year. It uh, came out a couple of months ago, or a few months ago now, I guess. And um, yeah, it hasn't really seemed to generate much buzz anywhere else either. There's a couple of reviews online uh, singing its praises, and not uncritically, but I don't necessarily agree with the, the criticisms that are raised in, in those reviews. Uh, I think it's a, a, a more or less a flawless book. Uh, certainly a brilliant one, uh, which um, is is a bit of a shame no one's really talking about it, so I thought I'd come in and talk about it myself. Um, it, it's set in, in Paris in the early 20th century and follows an artist about whom not much is really known biographically, so um, a, a, lot of, a lot has been written about his art uh, and his work, but uh, not much is known about him. His name is ha Haim Soutin. He was born in born in East Europe, uh, in Minsk, and and moved to Paris. Uh, lived in France for the rest of his life. Um, and all we know about him really is through the writings and biographies of his artist uh, friends, um, chiefly uh, 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 his closest friend, um, Armadio uh, Modigliani, uh, an Italian artist also living in Paris, um, who Soutine would do would, uh, anything he asked basically, he really looks up to him, uh, quite unusually for him because he doesn't generally care about human friendships or relationships, he doesn't really care about uh, money or uh, hygiene. He doesn't. He lives in filth and squalor and hangs dead carcasses up in his apartment because he paints dead animals and lets them rot for weeks on end. So he stinks all the time. Um, but he latches on to Modigliani and uh, really looks up to him. Modigliani is a sort of super handsome Italian artist. Um, you know, gets all the girls and does anything he wants. Uh, and he asks uh, Soutine uh, to help him in this boat race, which a bunch of the artists in, in about 1917 are are, are doing uh, on on the sign. Uh, is it was it the River Seine? I can never remember how to actually pronounce that. But in Paris, the river in Paris, and um, they're they're doing it out of like scrounge, scrounge material. So. Uh, uh, Modigliani is is doing the race in a bathtub, ostensibly pulled along by ducks. Uh, but in reality, it's it's Soutine down below in a, in a diving suit, uh, pulling along the bathtub from beneath. Um, and that's how the novel opens. Um, but as he's pulling along the bathtub um, and trudging along the the riverbed, um, he starts to. I mean, he has visions anyway, really. Um, he's a bit of a psychotic individual, but these visions are sort of emphasised, uh, whether because of the um, the lack of oxygen or you know the water pressure, uh, he starts to see things and um, also starts to uh, think about the past. So we we get a look into the not the um, the artist's past, uh, but also the future. So he's not necessarily envisioning the future, but the novel sort of spawns out of, the, of um, this sort of um, narrative device, this novelistic device of the artist trudging along the riverbed and um, it becomes a sort of narrative thread throughout the novel uh, from which um, you know the events um, spawn. So uh, I haven't put that very well but uh, every so often we'll come back to 
the boat race and he'll be made have made a little bit more progress uh, so it starts at the start and it ends at the end but in between you get all the events of his life and the novel uh, which is just a brilliant brilliant novelistic device in my eyes and uh, and unique and, and very well executed and effective uh, and yeah yeah it's brilliant um so yeah as i say he he, he lives in the squalor he doesn't care about relationships he he, he is with a few women in his life. Uh, he he mostly treats them like dirt and um, doesn't care about them. There's one exception towards um, or later on in his life, um, which uh, a woman he starts to care for because basically he looks she looks after him and in a very motherly way, and uh, that ends in tragedy. I, mean, I won't say what happens, but. Um, yeah, it's one one instance in the novel where you you sympathise with the main character, and um, you know it's more his sort of sentimental side. Um, the the um, the writing itself is just brilliant. It's a it's Stephen Steve Stern rather is is a craftsman uh, at the top of his game. It's just writing on another level really um so detailed um you, you really feel like you're in these you're in paris in 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 at the time and you're in these environments and you feel everything smell everything around you it's just, uh, brilliantly done all the characters as, as well are um vividly described in in, in great detail um his addiction, uh, well, the, the vocabulary is quite dense, and you know, having to consult the dictionary on every other page, but it you know, it's, doesn't take away from the experience at all. It adds to it. It's just um, a, a writer at the top of his game. Um, there are numerous sort of set pieces in the novel. Um, the first being the boat race, which opens it, but the chapter, um, uh, the first chapter, um, also ends with another set piece. Uh, takes place in a bar. Uh, Modigliani and Soutine are, are he, well, he takes Soutine out drinking, and uh, teaches him how to drink absinthe. absinthe. And uh, it doesn't end well. Let's say I won't say what happens, but it's so brilliantly done that I had to read it. Um, go back and read it numerous times just to sort of savour it and I did um, find myself reading reading the book quite slowly just because I was savouring every moment and you know it's not a it's not a short novel by any stretch but every page is so detailed and is so precise and you can see how much sort of um, care and, and research went into it um, because because there's not much known about the artist, I mean, he it's written in the third person, but every so often uh, the author will sort of step in and in the first person. So the first sentence, in fact, is is an instance of that. Um, so it says there are many tales, mostly untrue, about the friendship between the artist Haim Soutin and Armadio Modigliani. My favourite involves a boat race. So immediately it's sort of undermining the novel, saying these are mostly untrue. This probably isn't true. Um, but it's a, it's a novel, so we just we just go along with it. Um, and he does say in the acknowledgements that um, he was inspired, he found out the artist through books about Paris at the time. And then there are, there's one other novel, which I think is independently published, about the artist, I did have a quick look at it. It seemed to be quite good, although not on the same level as this, or that's probably not fair comparison because this is just so good. Um, and also, it's a narrative poem, but I can't remember who that's by, but about the artist. So, again, not much um, written about this subject directly. Um, I'll certainly uh, be going back to read uh, this author's other novels. There's quite a few. And I think he's a short story writer as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to offer my two cents on this book. And if you um, hadn't heard of this 
not all of you had even. Uh, I hope this will persuade you to uh, seek it out and, and give it a try for yourself. And again, yeah, if you if you have read it, please do let me know. Um, I'd just love to hear what you what you thought about it and if you liked it anywhere near as much as I did. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching and that's all for now.